Papa, mm? we are leaving for market now. Uh, I'll be out in a GP. Okay. Ozodima, meaning the best way, or where the way is good or gainful. No one recognizes the leader, but where it is bad and has no gains, the leader is condemned and receives all the blames. I was born in 1928 in Umwelem Enyogugu in Abombise. My father's name was Obina Ugochuku. Obina means one who is very dear to his father, while Ugochuku thanks for gifts from God. My parents were idol worshippers. They always turned to the gods for the protection of themselves and family members. Out of 24 children my father had, I was the fifth child. At the primal times, our people detest and hated Western education, always afraid of the white, and never wanted to appear before them. I was very fortunate, and little did I know what God had in store for me. I had formal education because my father had an English visitor and couldn't understand him. So he sent me to school in 1937. When I finished, I left for Jaws and took up a teaching job. The Second World War in 1944 had made life really difficult. I married my wife Fidelia in 1950. Her parents had died early, so she was denied the opportunity of education. She engaged in petty trading to earn a living. Early years of our marriage were filled with troubles as a result of miscarriages. But our hopes were placed in God. Due to her honesty, people around us regarded her as a worthy homemaker. Her duty is ever to give sound advice to people in all walks of life, whenever her attention is needed. Beside my small effort in teaching profession, I did not know that God had a work for me to do. In November 1965, I was visited in a dream by a tall person carrying a walking stick in his right hand. He asked whether I had read about Christian and Christiana from A Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. I told him that I had forgotten it, and he told me to read it again. After a few months, the same personage appeared to me again and took me to a most beautiful building and showed me everything in it. The personage appeared to me three times. During the Nigerian Civil War, when we were confined to the house, I picked up an old copy of the Reader's Digest from September 1958, opened it at page 34 and saw a picture of the same beautiful building I had been shown in my dream, and I immediately recognized it. The heading was The March of the Mormons. 
I had never before heard the word Mormon. I started to read the story because of the pictures of the building I had seen in my dream. I discovered that it was all about the Church of Jesus Christ of Flatter Descent. I had no rest of mind after I finished reading the story. My whole attention was focused on my new discovery. I rushed out immediately to tell my brothers, who were all amazed and astonished to hear the story. I could not write any letter to the headquarters of the church because of the blockage all over the country. At the removal of the blockage in 1971, I wrote a letter for instructions, pamphlet, tract, and a book of Mormon were sent to me, including Joseph Smith's testimony about the restoration of the gospel. Brother Lama S. Williams was in the missionary department at that time, and his instructions were that they had no authority to organize a church in Nigeria. Same with Edda W. Graham Bangata, but that the leadership had the desire to do so. I was totally disappointed, but the Holy Spirit moved me to continue writing. Many a times I saw some of the missionaries of the church discussing matters about the church. I was persecuted in various ways, but I kept deaf ears. I knew I had discovered the truth, and men's threat could not move me and my group. So we continued asking God to open the doors for us. In 9th October 1976, I wrote a letter to Edda Bangata. Dear Edda Bangata, I have received your letter of September 24th with thanks. I have noted what you said therein. We are not discouraged anyhow, but shall continue to pursue the practice of our faith, which we have found to be true. We are very optimistic that our Lord Jesus Christ will make it possible in the future for the church to take more direct action. We are well aware that our faith is being tried. We are doing everything we can to establish the truth among so many of our Heavenly Father's children in this part of the world. We continued praying always until the 21st of November 1978, when the church was officially opened for the Black Race in Africa with the authority to hold the priesthood and administer the ordinances thereof. Nineteen members were baptized on their birth date by Elders Randall N. Mabe, Edwin Q. Cannon Jr., and A. Bruce Knudsen. The above branch was organized with me as president, my brothers Francis and Raymond as my counselors, and my wife Fidelia as Relief Society president. I expressed my concern about the propriety of having my own family in these offices. Elder Mabe assured me that we've been chosen for our worthiness, not for our kingship. Joy overwhelmed me and promptly reported the event in the jubilant letter to the First Presidency. Dear brethren, all the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saint in this part of Nigeria have the pleasure to thank you and the Latter-day Saint throughout the world for opening the door for the Gospel to come to our people in its fullness. We are happy for the many hours in the upper room of the temple you spent praying to the Lord to bring us into the fold. We thank our Heavenly Father for hearing your prayers and ours, and by revelation, he has confirmed the long promised day and has granted the holy priesthood to us with the power to exercise his divine authority and enjoy every blessing of the temple. There is no doubt that the church here will grow and become a mighty center for the saints and bring progress enough to the people of Nigeria 
as it is doing all over the world. Amen. I am blessed with a humble and loyal wife, with seven fine and beautiful children who are all members of the true church on earth. The most important talk and love in my house are about our church. As Christ is guarding his true church, membership is increasing daily, and I testify that in the future, the membership of the church will be as great as the songs of the seashore. God is great and performs wonders. No human power can withhold God's work in this world.